Hey everybody, Matt here from Everyday Astro and welcome to part four of our How To Nina Guide. Today should be a bit of a quicker video than the last few because we are simply looking at the Sky Atlas and the Framing Assistant. So this is how you can find the object you want to image uh, and make sure you're framing that correctly before setting it as a sequence. So this should be relatively simple, uh, most of it is quite self-explanatory but I thought it was just worth going through things to make sure you're getting the most out of it. So let's jump into Nina quickly and have a quick look. Okay, as you can see, uh, all of our equipment is still connected, so we haven't moved anywhere from the last video, um, but this time we are simply going to jump into the little icon over here called Sky Atlas. Now this gives us various bits of information across the screen. Um, so the first bit, if we start down the bottom here, it tells me that the current illumination of the moon, what time it will rise, what time it sets. Uh, it also gives me some dawn, sunrise, uh, sunset and dark times, or dusk times as it classes it. Um, that is the end of those times, so that's when dusk ends and true night begins. So you can tell I'm already in that time of year where I'm fast running out of night. Uh, my true darkness doesn't start till gone 11 p.m. So I, I am fast running out of uh, imaging hours and soon uh, say it'll be that horrible summer period where it never truly gets dark. But hey, on the plus side, noctilucent clouds come back. So, you know, every cloud has a silver lining. So the idea of the uh, Sky Atlas is that you can try and find what you want and make the most out of it. Now, a lot of these items have uh, the name saved. So for example, if we search for Rosette, uh, there is a pretty good chance it will find the Rosette. So both the, the, the star cluster and the actual nebula itself. Um, with, any, with any of these, it gives you some various bits of information about what you've selected. So it gives it any names that it knows of. So we've obviously got Rosette A, and that is known as NGC 2237. Uh, it tells you it's in the constellation of Monoceros. Uh, it tells you that it's uh, a nebula, you know, so you, and it also gives you the transit of where it is. Now, these bands here are relative to what we were talking about as the, the times down here. So this light grey band is kind of after sunset and it's in that dusk period. This hard line here shows you where your darkness begins and the same the other end is where your true darkness ends and you go back into a, a dawn period there. So you can see down here it tells you that dusk fin is, finishes at 23.09 and if you look here, um, with midnight's there, nine o'clock's there, so that's about bang on to where it says that dusk will end. So that is how you can try and find some targets on it. On the right hand side it then gives you some options against those targets, so you can just immediately straight from your, your atlas set that as your sequence target and that'll put all the coordinates that you want in, um, but that does just literally set the coordinates at the centre of what it is that you're trying to image, so you might not necessarily want to frame it in that way. The second option is to set for framing assistant, now this is where I always go, or the third option is just you can slew directly to that target. So I'm not going to just uh, set it for the framing assistant just yet because there are some other things I want to go through in here before we get that far. Now one of them is that you might not always know what you want to image in a night. I mean, most astrophotographers usually come in with a plan. Planning is one of those critical things that you do need to do, as, as annoying and frustrating as it is, but it does mean you maximise your night. But if you haven't, there are various things you can put into uh, Nina that will try and help you find something. You know, would it be that bright nebula or dark nebula, or you can search for galaxies. Um, you know, and, and actually what it'll do is it will look for things that you could image from there. So, you know, if you wanted some suggestions, you could get it to that and, and it will now go through various different things for you to, to image. It's picked up hundreds of them here. Again, it gives you lots of information about them, uh, including uh, its brightness and, you know, the size of it and things like that. Uh, and you can then from that pick what it is that you want to image. However, if you know what the target is, it is easier just to put those details in. So we're going to use M31 as an example. So uh, it's given me all the information there and I'm going to set that for a framing assistant. And it'll now take me into this little tab here called framing and it will load me an image of what it is I'm trying to uh, image. So this is obviously Andromeda. And you, as you can see, my field of view is not going to fit Andromeda in it, not, not even remotely close. So 
with this it might be that I choose I actually only want to image the kind of the core of Andromeda and its lovely little neighbour in which case I can put this to where I want and you will notice if you watch the numbers down here as I move the box around it automatically adjusts the centre of that image so it would know where to or to align itself to and to plate solve to. Now these numbers will be different to these ones up here which is usually dead centre of the object that you've actually selected. So it is important to put the framing tool exactly where you would want it. So here you take the, the way it's got this box you can see my camera parameters so the number of pixels high and wide or how big my pixels are and my focal length of the telescope. So that's how it's worked out the size of this box. And at the bottom again it gives me uh, the, the movement of Andromeda through the night and well through the day as well and as you can see I'm in the wrong complete wrong end of the year to be imaging Andromeda that's not really going to be much good for me again until kind of late August early September or that will that'll start rising again um, but you know this, this works for the, for the sake of a tutorial so there's also four options down here so I've recenter image, don't ever really need that. Again, the option just to slew directly to that target if you wanted to. And the two most important ones here generally either replace a sequence or add a sequence. So if you are only intending to image Andromeda that night, just replace a sequence because that would be your only sequence there. If Andromeda is one of a number of sequences that you want to do, then add as a sequence and it'll do it. So for example, if I put in just as replace a sequence here, it will now take me down into the sequence tab here. I have Andromeda as the uh, target that I'm going for. It's brought through those details from where that box was. Um, and I can now set a sequence for that and hit play and off I would go and get my sequence done. However, we, we've already decided that I can't actually get the whole of Andromeda into my field of view. So maybe what I want to do is, is take say a four panel mosaic here. And that's where you can bring in this part over here. So I can have, say, two horizontal and two vertical panels. I also still don't think that's right. So I think if I got that to about 30 degrees, see now that to me is sitting roughly about, that's what I think I would have to take in order to get the whole of the Andromeda galaxy into one image. I know the overlap percentage, that's these bands here. Um, so for stitching purposes, you do need to overlap in a mosaic so it knows where to put one on top of the other and align them properly. Um, so I set that to 20%. I always find that's enough without crossing over too much. Um, but I, I've now got what I think could be a great mosaic. But obviously that's gonna take four imaging sessions to do that. And thankfully, Nina does that by itself. So if I now went replace a sequence, Again, it will take me into the sequencing tab, uh, and but you can see now, see across the top, I have four sequences, which is panel one, panel two, panel three, and panel four. And if you were to look at the coordinates for each of these, they change ever so fractionally, uh, and that is just, they each panel has already been worked out by Nina for you. So from here again, you could then just set the number of images you wanted to take for each of these, um, so, and then in sequence mode, you would do one after the other. So IE will run sequence number one. When this sequence is finished, it will move on to number two, and it will run that one, and then three and four, before finishing all the sequences at the end of the night. So it is a really, really simple way of getting everything you need into your sequencing and knowing from the framing that you have got exactly what you want, rather than having any wasted subs at the end of the night. And when you're plate solving within Nina, it will also tell you the angle of the camera as well. So as long as you can adjust that on your setup, then all you need to do is plate solve. Once it's in the right position, look for that camera angle, and then you can rotate your camera until the angle meets the requirement that you've got on here, or somewhere very, very close to it. So obviously it doesn't need to be within a single degree perfect, but it just means again, you can make sure you get the maximum amount of data and uh, imaging that you want for the effort that you're going to put in. So I said, these, these aren't very complicated and, and this has been a pretty quick video, um, but I did just want to show you some of the benefits you have of using this. Again, I like the fact this is all in one system. So the, you know, the fact that I don't have to go between multiple systems to do things, I always think is a really positive thing. 
you know, I, I, I'd much rather have everything in one place. I just find that a whole lot easier. And it also makes it a whole lot easier on the night too, because you're not constantly having to mess about between systems. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to show for this video. Uh, so hopefully that was quick and you found that useful and it'll help you when it comes to actually getting ready for your image sessions during an evening. Um, in the next video, what we're going to look at is the sequencing. So we'll look at how we use that sequencing to get the right mix of images that you want during a night and how you can use multiple targets and also how you can run an end of sequence program. Um, so if like me, for example, you, you tend to go to bed and leave your rig imaging, um, actually you can run a sequence of a few little things so that when you do get up, everything is parked and warmed and ready to come in. You don't have to wait for any of that. You can just go downstairs, switch everything off uh, and bring it inside or put it in the garage or wherever you put it and not have to spend too long back out of bed while you're incredibly tired. So that'll be in the next video. Until then, stay safe and I'll see you soon.